my name is Dr Andy Wright and I'm an Associate Professor at De Montfort and my area is Energy and Buildings. Most of the energy we use, or more than half of it, a lot more than half, is for most homes is heating and most of that is for gas, is using gas. So the ways we can do that is by reducing thermostat settings, um, turning off heating in when we don't need it in rooms, uh, changing time settings so that we're heating for less, not heating for not in the house, and just generally being careful about where and when we heat uh, our rooms. And also, if you have an inefficient boiler, then it's, it's worth getting a new one, but um, most people now have modern boilers. So on the electrical side, it's, it's certainly worth getting efficient lighting. So the, the new LED lights, which are pretty standard now, are quite cheap and they're much more efficient than the older types of fluorescence or, or the old tungsten type of bulbs, hot ones. And they, they will only use about a, a sixth the energy of an old fashioned bulb, so they're worth getting. Uh, other large uses of cooking, if you do a lot of electric cooking, that's a significant amount of energy, particularly in oven, if microwaves, a lot more efficient. Also washing, anything to do with heat really is, is using more uh, energy, so washing, dishwashing, using lower temperature settings, using eco settings will save you energy and just being efficient in the way you do washing, so only do them when you have a full load. Uh, if, it's, if you're drying clothes that uses lots of energy, if you can dry clothes outside, put them on a line, if it's dry and warm that will save you energy compared to tumble drying. And also not leaving things on which are not being used for long periods like televisions or stereos and things which are just using power when they're not, not doing anything. Right, well the biggest savings is on heating again and most buildings that use heat in, in two main ways. Firstly, the air is passing through the building and losing heat as it will. You have to warm the air as it comes in and then it's lost to outside. Unless you have a very modern house which has a mechanical system where the, the air is, is exchanged and the heat is recovered as, as the air comes out mechanically. But not many of us have those. So making sure the house isn't too uh, drafty, putting draft stripping or having modern windows and so on will reduce that. You don't have to reduce it too much. If you don't have enough ventilation you get problems with condensation and mould which are obviously going to save your energy but it will uh, causing other problems like health problems. So you, you really don't want to make it too sealed but have enough ventilation but not to be wasting energy with gaps under doors or very leaky windows. You can feel the drafts around doors and windows if you have that. And the second thing is insulation. It's quite difficult and expensive to insulate walls of homes if you have an old house. Modern houses have more insulation. The easy thing to do is insulate the loft, the ceiling above the top floor, if it's not insulated. And that can be done fairly cheaply and easily with rolls of insulation. It's a bit of a messy, dusty job and you have to be reasonably thick to crawl around in the loft with doing it. So you may need to get someone to install it for you, but it's certainly well worth doing. It will make the house warmer and save you quite a lot of energy. Uh, there isn't a lot that you can do on the electrical side because that's more to do with the appliances you use, um, lighting and so on, as I just described. Okay, industry uses about a sixth of the energy in the UK. Households use about 29% or nearly a third of the energy and 40% of the energy goes on transport, the rest is for services. So transport is mostly private cars, um, plus of course trucks, buses and so on, and a lot less for flying and, and trains. So uh, we, as individuals we obviously use cars and, and motorbikes and so on. Uh, if we can cut down car use, uh, that and, or buy more efficient cars or buy electric cars, that can make a significant saving in energy and also in your own cost. Um, and so it, it is significant both in the household level and the transport, which are probably roughly equal between, um, you know, for a typical person, the amount they use for transport and the amount they use in their house are going to be probably broadly similar if they run a car. Yeah. The cost of energy, that's a really complicated question. Um, household builds used to be round about 
but if you go back a couple of years, it was about a thousand pounds typically for a household, to be about five hundred for gas, five hundred for electric, or maybe a bit more. If you have a, a very modern, efficient home, then the gas will be a lot less. Uh, now our bills have gone up a lot, but probably more like three thousand pounds a year. We're in a sort of odd transitional point at the moment. At the, at the moment, the cost of energy is very much subsidised by the government. They've capped the prices of gas and electricity so that an average house will use, not spend more than two and a half thousand pounds, but it could easily spend more if, if we use more energy. It's not a total that's capped, it's just the unit price of each unit of, of energy or gas, which is electricity or gas, which is capped. That is going to last until April, and then we'll, there'll be a different subsidy. I'm not sure the details of that. It'll be less generous, so we'll probably find our bills. Uh, the cost of energy will go up, obviously, because it's warmer weather. Then we'll be using a lot less for heating uh, over the summer. So it, our gas use will go down, but the prices will go up. Um, in the longer term, it looks like energy prices are coming down. Uh, they've, they've gone up because of the Ukraine war and other factors. Probably they'll come down, but because companies buy in the long term, they don't buy sort of day by day, they buy several months ahead. So their, their prices won't come down to consumers as quickly as the, the, the market prices have come down. So it's a very complicated moving picture. Eventually the government may end subsidies completely, and then we're paying market prices, but those market prices will probably be a lot less than they have been in the last few months. So it's a completely dynamic and complex picture. Overall, we'll probably spend, be paying more for energy and people will be taking a lot more interest in energy efficiency. Well, we have to have a mix of sources because they all have different characteristics and we're trying to move away from fossil fuels. We've already moved away very largely from coal in the UK, although we do still burn some coal for power generation. Uh, we've almost entirely stopped using coal for heating, which used to be the main source for heating. So we moved away from coal. Oil we still use obviously a lot in transport and flying. Electric cars or more efficient hybrid cars will gradually replace existing petrol diesel cars uh, and probably will be using just electric cars in 10, 15 years time almost entirely. So that takes away the oil part of it. That leaves gas, which is, we're very, very much dependent on gas for heating almost all our buildings. We're also very dependent on it for generation of power. And the good thing about gas is you can turn it on and off and, and vary the output of gas power stations very easily. Um, and they have to fill in the gaps when we don't have, we have, we obviously using wind generation now and solar, but they only generate when the sun's shining or when it's windy. So we have these times when it's calm weather, when there's very little wind, maybe very little sun as well, and then we need, need that gas to fill in the gap. We also have nuclear, which only runs normally as a base load. That means it runs constantly. It's not so easy to vary the output of a nuclear power station. So they all have different characteristics. We, we will generally move to more, towards more renewables. There's more and more wind coming on stream, but we'll still need something which can uh, vary output um, to, to match the load and that in the shorter term will probably still be gas. We may eventually move to something else or battery storage or something but there isn't really anything to replace gas in its current role for, for many years. Like most policies some do and some don't, there have been some very big policy failures in this area, the Green Deal, some people may remember the idea was to have a sort of loan on your gas, on your energy bill, which was going to pay for the, you do you spend some money to make improvements like insulation, and then the loan would be paid back from the savings, and that was a complete disaster, only a very small number of households took it on for lots of reasons. Other policies like banning pure petrol and diesel cars by 2030, uh, they will just force industry to go to down electric car route and that's just a it's a kind of legal thing so they won't have any option things like that can have a really big impact and that means companies start to gear up and move towards electric transport and because it because they know it's coming and that that really has a massive impact so it really depends on on the on the policy
Some people think that the amount of um, energy you need, or carbon emissions you need to produce the low energy products like PV panels or electric car batteries uh, is a lot more than the actual devices generate. There's a lot of urban myths around this. Uh, it's not true that you use more energy to say make a solar panel than it generates. There is a cost, they are quite high energy products to make, but you get that back within a few weeks or a few months of the when you start using them, they generate more energy than was used to make them. And the same with electric cars. Also, electric car batteries can be recycled, so they may have an end of life, but that doesn't mean you strap them, you, well, you, you recycle them or, or re, uh, repurpose them to some other function. So it is, it is a myth to say that, um, that the energy they produce never pays, pays back on the energy used to make them. Um, but it's also true that quite a lot of energy is used to make these, um, these energy, uh, more low energy products. For example, a wind turbine has a huge amount of concrete sometimes in the base to, to make it a stable base and all that concrete takes a lot of heat and carbon emissions to produce. So although the, once the turbine is running, it, it won't it produce a very small amount of emissions, the, there is a significant but not very long sort of payback when you, you're getting back the energy that you've, you've used to produce the, the device. Mm -hmm.